Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about lambda expressions. So in our last video, we looked at the basics of function objects. So we saw how we could overload the function call operator for a struct or class that we had defined. Now, inside of that video, we saw that there was a decent amount of boilerplate code we had to write just to get this function object. So we had to define something like a struct. We added, say, a data member in our case. We added a constructor, and then we also added, um, you know, that overload for that function call operator. Now, fortunately, since C++11, we've had a nicer way of doing this in many cases, and that's going to be through these lambda expressions. So these lambda expressions allow us to create an unnamed function object capable of capturing variables in scope. This basically allows us to create a function object without having to define something like a struct or a class. So let's go ahead and see the basics on how we can use these lambda expressions by looking at our same example from last time, right? And replacing our um, is divisible function object with just a lambda expression. So let's go ahead and open up this lambdas.cpp here. And we have our example from last time. So we implemented the struct is divisible that has some divisor. We set that divisor inside of a constructor here, this new divisor, this integer. And then we overload this function call operator. Right, and as a parameter, we have our dividend. And what we're checking here is to see if our dividend can be evenly divided by our divisor. So when we do this integer division, we have a remainder of zero. That's what we're trying to check here. So let's go ahead and see how we can replace this, um, this function object that we created here from this is divisible type uh, and see how we can convert that to just being a lambda expression and see how much simpler it can be. So the first thing that we can do is get rid of this is divisible type and we'll just rely on this unnamed function object because it's this unnamed function object we'll use this auto type right we'll rely on our compiler to figure out this type for us with our lambda expressions then what we can do is we can set it equal to this lambda expression here and our lambda ex expression really has three major parts it has these uh, square brackets here that says what we want to capture. So these will be the variables, say, from our scope that we may want to include, either by value or by reference. Um, we could even create new variables inside of this captures um, brackets right here. Then we have, you know, just like a normal function or member function here, we have these parens here that says the parameters that we want this function object to take. So it's just a list of parameters. And then, of course, with these curly brackets, we have a function body. So those are the three major parts. So we can start with captures here. So in our is divisible function object up here, we had some state here, this int divisor. So we can do the exact same here with captures and we can just say something like divisor is equal to 10. So this is similar to creating a variable, but we don't even need to use auto, right? To specify a type here or specify that this is an integer type. It'll automatically be deduced because we're setting equal to 10 here. Then we can go ahead and add our parameters using these uh, parens. So just like our um, you know, overloaded operator here that takes a dividend, we can just specify that this takes some int dividend, right? So this is what we're going to divide. And then we're going to have our curly brackets, right? This is going to be um, the body of our function that we're defining for this unnamed function object. So here, right, we're just going to use the exact same body as we used for our function call operator from our is divisible class. So here we'll go ahead and just say we're going to return dividend mod uh, divisor is equal to zero. So we're just doing integer division here. We're dividing our dividend by our divisor using the module operator to get the remainder. And we're just making sure that the remainder is equal to zero, right? So look at what we've done here. We've written these this three lines of code, right? And this line of code down here is really just a semicolon. And we were able to completely replace this uh, entire struct up here that we have defined. And we have the exact same functionality implemented. So we can go ahead and completely remove this is divisible. We don't need it anymore. And we can go ahead and use this lambda expression for the rest of this example here. So in the rest of this example, what are we doing? We're creating a vector filled with some numbers here. Then we're using findif, right, to find some value or the first instance of some value in my vector where this condition is true. So we created this is divisible by 10 anonymous function object using this lambda expression. So we're just making sure that some number divided by 10 
has a remainder of zero here. So we're just going to find the first case where that's true using the std ranges find if from C++20 inside of the range my vector here. And we're using a lambda instead of our function object that we defined last time, right, through that struct. And then we're just going to print out that value here from this iterator returned by std ranges find if here. So in this case, the first number inside of this range um, that divided by 10, right, has a zero remainder is going to be 20 here. So let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and uh, minimize it. We can compile this lambdas.cpp uh, with G++ and we'll call our output executable, just something like lambdas. And because we're using this range base or this uh, constrained algorithm, the std ranges find if, we're going to have to specify that std equals C++20. And you'll need to use a relatively modern compiler that supports these constrained algorithms. Okay, so we went ahead and we generated an executable here and we can go ahead and run it. And you can see that we get the value of 20 printed out here. So we can see that we got the exact same functionality from this incredibly simple Lambda expression as we did with that struct that we defined that overloaded that operator. So a Lambda can be a great way to make our code a little bit more concise and clear, right? Rather than having to define these dedicated structs or classes to have function objects. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. That's kind of the basics of using these Lambda expressions and creating them um, with a simple example that you know, shows how we can pass it even to find if here, like we did our regular function object that we defined through a struct or class. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.